Tip five, you already know structures. Trust me, you already know structures. The thing you don't you may have some trouble with is speaking your version of structures uh, into a world of engineer speak, right? That's all it is. It's not as complicated as it looks or seems. Uh, so let's give a, a couple little general statements about this, and then I'll use an example. Uh, so one is concepts are more important than formulas. The formulas, the entire point of the formulas uh, is to make tangible the concepts. Often, if you understand the, for the, the formula well enough, you understand the concept uh, and what, how the, the concept and the formula fit together, you don't need to do any math. It's not about doing math. There will be more questions about sort of general ideas than there will be about math. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have to do some math just so they can see that you know how to plug numbers in. Um, nobody's going to expect you to memorize formulas, although it's actually useful to memorize a few of them just so you can recognize them quickly. All that information will actually be given to you. You just have to be able to find the right information and uh, plug it in in the right spot. It's kind of a key sort of thing to understand. Engineers will say things that sound like they're truths, but they're not truths. They're just simplifications. The world is complex. They look for ways to make it simple so that you know big, complex things, decisions can get made. Uh, don't get fooled by that. You actually do understand what's going on, even if they say it in some odd way. They're still saying something that you already understand. Uh, and obviously, don't fret because uh, it's not going to help. So let me do an example here. I'm going to use a couple of uh, uh, terms. One is the modulus of elasticity, E. Uh, one is the moment of inertia, I. Uh, and the section modulus, just as another example, of, um, is uh, uh, S. Um, and here's some examples off to the side here of uh, uh, the section modulus being calculated. So the E, modul modulus of elasticity, is a term about the stress-strain diagram uh, that describes essentially how robust a material is. The modulus, uh, modulus of elasticity for steel is significantly higher than it is for, say, wood. Wood has a pretty good modulus. You know, wood's pretty strong. It's pretty good. Steel's way stronger. It's going to have a much higher modulus of elasticity. The I and the S are about shape. So the E is about material, the I and the S are about shape, right? So uh, if I'm thinking about a beam that I want to have span across, uh, say, 20 feet, let's say I'm putting a joist in, and have this beam, uh, this joist go across about 20 feet, do I want uh, to be tall and thin, or do I want it to be flat and wide? What do you think? Anybody? Tall and thin, obviously, right? Right? That's what a joist looks like in section, badly. Uh, why is that? Because shape matters, right? What I want is I want for, for spanning capacity, similar in, in columns, it's a little more complicated because it's, it's directional and multi, multi directions. In beams, it's sort of straightforward to understand, so I'm going to talk about beams. Uh, if I have a beam spanning across, what do I want? I want to get the meat of the material as far apart from the central axis as I can. Right? That's what's going to be the most useful. Well, how do I know that? How, do I, how do, can I tell one from the other when I look around? Well, the I and the S are about shape. So is a bunch of other stuff. There's a bunch of different ones that are these little quick formulas to get at the idea of shape. So if I have a higher I, the moment of inertia, that's going to mean that I have more material farther away from the central axis. Doesn't mean it's strong material. Like I have balsa wood that has a very high uh, moment of inertia. Doesn't mean it's going to be strong, right? Because I also have the, the wood itself has to be strong. But I need the shape to be the strong shape as well, right? So I have these different ways of looking at these 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 elements. The reason I show all this section modulus, the S, and how you get to it, the reason that those things exist is not to make life hard and confusing and weird. The reason is because if you're actually going to do the whole out calculation and figure out where the different chunks of the material are, you're going to do a whole big calculation of it out, you realize that a bunch of the time you keep stumbling across the same uh, groupings of, uh, of pieces of information. So why not just column S 
and make a list of them. You can look it up in a book. Instead of finding all it, you just look it up, and there it is. Right? It's just a way to simplify the world. Nothing complicated. E is about material. I and S about shape. Right? So let's think about that for a second. So here's one crazy look and formula. Right? Triangle means delta, change. So that's talking about deflection. 5WL to the fourth over 384EI. Like it's completely nutty looking. Right? How can you know what the hell that's supposed to mean? You know what it means. If I have that joist that we just talked about, and I'm spanning across, and I put a weight on it, and the weight is W, right? The dead weight plus the live load, right? I have a W of the weight on it. It's going to deflect down, right? It's going to bend down. It's going to start having that sort of, uh, you know, shape of little curved shape. Of course it is. You know that. Well, how much is it going to go down? What would be the change? How much would that happen? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out here, right? That's the delta. That's the change, right? So this is a formula to understand that. Now, why am I using this formula? I, we could talk about any number of different formulas. This one, I think, just happens to look crazy, and I love that you can actually figure it out so fast and easy if you just stop and think about it. Uh, so we look at it. The 5 and the 384 are just constants. Who cares about them? They're there. Whatever, right? doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about those. The W, that's the weight. The L, that's the length of that beam. The E and the I, we just talked about. That's the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia. So let's say we have this joist, and I'm trying to decide between doing it out of uh, wood or steel, right? I mean, unlikely situation. But let's say that's what we're, we're trying to decide. We're going to make this joist out of wood or steel, right? Everything else is the same. We have a set situation. We have a certain length. We have a certain load, that, you know, design expectation load that we're expecting. So there's a certain idea, this design concept that we're thinking about. And now the question is, do we put uh, a wood beam there or steel beam? Well, what's the E going to have? What's going to happen to the E if we use steel instead of wood? It's going to go way up, right? Steel is much more robust from a modulus of elasticity standpoint than the wood is. Even the Douglas fir, which is a very good wood, right, is going to have a much lower uh, E than the steel would be. So, okay, you look at that formula. What does that tell us? That tells us that the denominator, the lower number, is going to get much bigger. Therefore, the overall fraction will be a smaller number. Therefore, if we use steel, it's telling us that we're going to have less deflection uh, because it's steel than if it was wood. That was something you knew already. That's something, now that you look at that diagram, that, that formula, you can tell that's what it's saying to you, right? It's complicated looking, but it's nothing you didn't know. You're going to use steel versus wood. The steel is going to be less, has less deflection. You know that. There it is, right there. The E goes up. The overall number goes down, less deflection. Use wood instead. That lower denominator goes up. The, the delta changes. Therefore, that means there's more deflection. This is what you know. OK, let's say it's wood. Let's say we chose uh, Douglas fir, and we're doing it out of wood. And we, just like we talked about a minute ago, we say, all right, are we going to do it uh, vertically, or are we going to do it uh, like a board, right? So we have two choices. One is that we're going to use uh, vertically in section, and the other one is that we're going to use it like a board in section. Well, that's about shape, right? The farther away, we said that I want to span across, I want to get the meat of the material farther away from the central axis of uh, whatever it is my spanning material is, right? Uh, so there's the central axis for that one. Sorry, I didn't line them up very well. Sorry about that. Right? On the one that's a board, the material isn't far away from the central axis. I'm not getting any benefit from it. You know this already, right? You put a board out, you make it nice and wide to walk across, that'd be great, right? But now it bends way down. Be nice and stiff if you stand it upright, but now it's going to be hard to walk on, right? Because it's thin, so you have to put a floor on it. Uh, so, like, this is stuff that you know. Right? That I, I'm going to have a bigger number for I in the one situation uh, that gives me, gives me that, uh, that one standing tall than I am going to have it on the one that's laying flat. Exact same thing we just talked about. 
I'm going to have that larger number is going to make the deflection less. The smaller number would, uh, if I did it as a board, you can make the deflection more, right? Uh, so this is one example of how you know this. Don't fret about it. Look for the information and translate it back into your terminology. Nobody else is going to do that for you, weirdly. Engineers don't even understand that it's weird terminology. Uh, so you have to actually make that happen. When you read these, these guidebooks, when you look at this information, you have to translate it back into your information, the way that you think about it. All right. Oh, and don't forget Sokotoa. So look it up. Sign, cosine, tangent. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or you want your to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. So that's going to be on April 22nd.